After studying this module, you shall be able to know about the UV visible spectrometer, identify different types of UV visible spectrometers, learn how to prepare a sample for the UV visible spectrometry, learn about the working of UV spectrophotometer and understand concept of UV visible spectroscopy. Spectroscopy is one of the best methods to identify a substance which may include UV, IR, NMR, Raman and others. Here we will discuss about the various aspects of different spectroscopic techniques and more specifically about UV spectroscopy and its uses. UV spectrophotometer. Spectrophotometer is a kind of spectrometer which measures the transmittance or absorbance of a sample as a function of wavelength when light of certain intensity and frequency range is passed through the sample. Unlike a spectrometer which is any instrument that can measure the properties of light over a range of wavelengths, a spectrophotometer measures only the intensity of light as a function of its wavelength. The key components of a spectrometer are light source, monochromator, sample area, detector and recorder. Light source. The most suitable sources of light are deuterium lamp which emits the light in the UV region 160 to 375 nanometers. Tungsten lamp or tungsten halogen lamp which emits radiation in the visible and near IR regions that is 350 to 2500 nanometers. Xenon arc lamp which emits radiation in the range 190 to 800 nanometer. Light emitting diodes that is LEDs which emits radiation in the visible range 400 to 800 nanometers. Monochromator. The main function of the monochromator is to disperse the beam of light obtained from the primary source into its components. The principal components of monochromator are an entrance slit, a collimating lens, a dispersing device, a focusing lens, an exit slit. The radiation emitted from the primary source, polychromatic radiation that is, enters the monochromator through the entrance slit. The beam is collimated and then strikes the dispersing element, prism or grid at a particular angle. Two angles of dispersion devices, viz. Prisms and holographic gratings are commonly used in UV visible spectrophotometers. Light falling on the prism is reflected at different angles depending on the wavelength of the beam which is split into its component colors. By moving the dispersing elements or the exit slit, radiation of only a particular wavelength can be obtained which leaves from the exit slit and can be used for the recording purpose. The beam selected by the slit is monochromatic and further divided into beams with the help of another prism which then passes through the sample and refers solutions. Sample area. One of the two divided beams is passed through the sample solution and the other beam is passed through the reference solution. Although the samples for recording the spectra are most commonly liquids but the absorbance of gases and even solids can be measured. Both sample and reference solution are placed in a transparent cell known as a cuvette. The cuvettes are rectangular in shape and usually have an internal width of 1 cm. It is important that the material of cells must be transparent to the radiation through the region under study. The cells are usually made of glass, plastic as well as silica or quartz. Of these glass cells cannot be used for UV region as they absorb light in the UV region but can be used satisfactorily in the visible region. Quartz is transparent in all 200 to 700 nanometer ranges and is best choice and hence can be easily used in UV as well as visible regions. Next is detector and recorder. A detector converts a light signal into an electrical signal. 
after the beams are passed through the sample under study as well as the reference cell, the intensities of the respective transmitted beams are then compared over the whole wavelength range of the instrument. Generally, two photo cells are used as detectors in UV spectrometer to record the spectrum. One of the photo cell receives the beam from the sample cell and second detector receives the beam from the reference. The intensity of the radiation from the reference cell is stronger than the beam of sample cell. This results in the generation of pulsating or alternating currents in the photocells. Spectrophotometers consist of either a photomultiplier tube detector or a photodiode detector. The commonly used detector in UV visible spectroscopy is a photomultiplier tube. It consists of the following three components. First, a cathode which emits electrons when struck by photons of radiations known as photoemissive cathode. Second, several dynodes which emit several electrons for each electron striking them. Third, an anode. In its functioning, when a photon of radiation strikes the cathode, emission of several electrons takes place. These emitted electrons are then accelerated towards the many dynodes. The first dynode is 90 volt more positive than the cathode. The electrons strike the first dynode causing the emission of several electrons for each incident electron. These electrons are then accelerated towards the second dynode to produce more electrons which are accelerated towards dinode 3 and so on. Finally, all the electrons are collected at the anode. Several dinodes are arranged between the anode and the cathode to produce an amplification effect. Each photon usually produces 10 to the power 6 to 10 to the power 7 electrons resulting in the amplified current that can be measured. Photomultipliers are very sensitive to both UV and visible radiations and have fast response times. It is significant to note that intense light may damage photomultipliers. Hence, they are limited to measuring low power radiation. Photodiodes are increasingly being used as detectors in modern spectrophotometers. Photodiode de detectors have wider dynamic range and are more robust than photomultiplier tube detectors. In a photodiode, light falling on the semiconductor material allows electrons to flow through it, thereby depleting the charge in a capacitor connected across the material. The amount of charge that is required to recharge the capacitor to regulate intervals is proportional to the intensity of the light. The limits of detection are approximately 170 to 1100 nanometer for silicon based detectors. Some modern spectrophotometers contain an array of photodiode detectors instead of a single detector. A diode array consists of a series of photodiode detectors positioned side by side on a silicon chip. Each photodiode is connected to a transistor switch via a charge capacitor when photons strike to the diode. Free electrical charge carriers are generated that discharge the capacitors. The capacitors are recharged at regular intervals. The amount of charge needed to recharge the capacitors is proportional to the number of photons detected by each diode, which 
in turn is proportional to the light intensity. The absorption spectrum is obtained by measuring the variation in light intensity over the entire wavelength range. The types of UV visible spectrophotometers. There are two types of spectrophotometers namely single beam spectrophotometer or double beam spectrophotometer. Each has its own advantages and disadvantages. A single beam spectrophotometer as shown in the figure has only one beam of light which passes through the sample. Therefore, it requires taking reading for the reference and the sampling separately. Whereas on the other hand if you take a look at the double beam spectrophotometer in this the light is split into two beams before it reaches the sample. The two beams move simultaneously one passing through a reference solution and the other through the sample. The reference beam intensity is taken as 100 percent transmission or 0 percent absorbance and the measurement displayed is the ratio of the two beam intensities. Of the two types of spectrophotometers that have been discussed, the double beam spectrophotometer is faster to operate and better in performance considering the various design features as mentioned. They provide more reproducible results because they can perform on an automatic correction mode for the loss of light intensity as the beam passes through the sample and the reference solution simultaneously. We now next take up the sample preparation in UV visible spectroscopy. The UV visible spectra are usually measured in very dilute solution. Usually only 1 milligram of the compound of the molecular weight 100 to 200 is dissolved in 100 ml of a suitable solvent with a suitable polarity and only a portion of this is used for recording the spectra. The solvent should not absorb radiation and must be transparent over the desired range of wavelength which is required for the UV visible spectroscopy. The solvents which do not contain conjugated systems are most suitable for recording the UV visible spectra. The solvent should also be inert to the sample. The most commonly used solvent is 95 percent ethanol and the reason for this is because the residual benzene present in commercial ethanol absorbs in UV region and is thus not preferred. Now as you can see that table and lists common solvents used in UV spectroscopy and the minimum wavelength from which they may be used in 1 centimeter QS provided. The common solvents are acetonitrile, water, cyclohexane, hexane, methanol, ethanol, ether, methylene dichloride, chloroform, carbon tetrachloride. Their wavelengths, the minimum wavelengths are basically shown in the table from in the increasing order ranging from 190 for acetonitrile to 257 in carbon tetrachloride. We next move on to the absorption laws in UV spectroscopy. Now light absorption by molecules is governed by two empirical laws about absorption intensity absorbed by the sample. These are first the Lambert's law, second the Lambert's Beer's law. Now first we would like to instate what is Lambert's law. It states particularly that when a beam of monochromatic radiation passes through a homogeneous absorbing medium, the rate of decrease of intensity of radiation with thickness of absorbing medium is proportional to the intensity of incident radiation passed through the sample. Now mathematically we can change it into the natural logarithm to the base 10 stating that i is equal to i naught 10 raised to power minus a x where a is the extinction coefficient of the absorbing medium and a is thus equal to k upon 2.303. Here k is the molar absorption coefficient 
and its value depends upon the nature of the absorbing substance. We next come on to the Lambert's Beer's law. Now this law states that when a beam of monochromatic radiation is passed through a solution of an absorbing substance, the rate of decrease of intensity of the radiation passed through the sample with the thickness of the absorbing medium is proportional to the intensity of incident radiation as well as the concentration of the solution. Now we can see the difference, the difference is that in the Lambert's law only the concentration was not there, however in the Lambert's Beer's law the factor of concentration has been taken into account. In mathematical terms this law can be represented by changing the nature of logarithm to the base 10 again that is log 10 I naught by I, I naught is the incident radiation intensity is equal to A dash Cx. Here as I have already told you while stating the law C stands for the concentration of the sample which has been prepared which should be the minimum dilution. Now solving this equation we shall get capital A which is the absorbance which is the opposite of transmittance is equal to A dash Cx. As I already told you C is the concentration, X is the length of the cuvette taken and A dash is the molar absorption coefficient which is equal to K dash upon 2.303. Now next we go to the limitations of the Lambert's Beer's law. We know that Beer Lambert's law mostly maintains a linear relationship between absorbance, concentration and path length x of the sample prepared of that concerned molecule. On the contrary, under certain conditions this law may deviate to give a non-linear relationship. Now in the following factors we study what are those deviations. First I would like to go to the chemical deviations. First deviation can be stated as deviations observed in absorptivity coefficients at high concentrations that is greater than 0 0.01 molar. As it has already been stated the solutions should be dilute while measuring UV visible spectroscopy. Now because of this the high because of high concentration the electrostatic interactions between mo molecules in close proximity tend to increase and hence the law deviates from linearity. Deviation number 2 with increasing concentration C of the analyte its refractive index is subject to change thus the values of A and K may change too. This deviates the law from linearity again. Third may arise due to specific chemical species of the sample under consideration and that may cause serious deviations. Next comes the instrument deviations, the deviations caused by the instrument. Non-linearity arises in the Lambert's Beer's law due to non-monochromatic and stray radiations in the instrument which falls under the instrumentation deviations as told earlier. Now the last deviation, the deviations that may be caused by samples exhibiting fluorescence and phosphorescence. These were the deviations in the Lambert's Beer's law which causes it to deviate from linearity into non-linearity. Thus care must be taken for the instruments as well as during the preparation of the sample in the UV visible spectra. Now let us summarize whatever we have studied so far. Now the important points are a spectrophotometer is an instrument which measures the transmittance or absorbance of a sample as a function of wavelength when light of a certain intensity and frequency range is passed through the sample. Second point is the two types of UV visible spectrophotometers namely the single beam spectrophotometer in which the reference and the sample have to be done separately 
and the double beam spectrophotometer in which the sample and the reference solutions can be done simultaneously. So, double beam spectrophotometers have more advantages as compared to the single beam spectrophotometers as has been stated earlier. The third comes the absorption laws, the Lambert's law and the Lambert's Beer's law which states that the absorption is directly proportional to the concentration of absorbing substance and the length of the path of radiation through the sample in case of Lambert's Beer's law and we do not take the concentration factor into account in case of Lambert's law.